Right, what you're about to see is copies of the documents that I've filed over the last 10 years on and off with the Crown. Now, I'm going to show you what I'm getting annoyed at and what the excuses are they keep doing. You can see the one where I've got the one listed, which is the one I did in 2004 that's looking at in front of you. You can also see the name of the High Court judge that dealt with it and all the things to do with that. And that was her final decision. What's interesting is the minutes that was done before this was done are missing. Because at the end of those minutes, I had her clearly state for the record that, yes, I have all the evidence to prove my case, but until I got it written correctly, I could not have my case heard. This is the only thing that still survived because my copy has been lost. You can again see who I originally filed against. Now, I made little notes in different places along here of what was what and where was where. And little references I've put in here, including where I explained about how I got sick in the first place which i'm not sure if you can see it very well with the camera doing this but the little notations i've made here like where it says she claims in effect that the hospital admitted at the time that she had contacted disease which we know later that they did because remember this was filed in 2004 and i listed all the things i'd gone through and all the things i had to put up with and everything i had to put up with and the background of all the doctors i'd seen and everything else and the judge's decision back then part of it was section 14 that says in my discussions with Mrs. Janae, she appears to say that the claim is based primarily on the following allegations and factual matters. Administration of the double, uh, the, the two doses of polio vaccine to her in 1970, which should not have been administered to her because she has the immune disorder. B, her subsequent development of post-polio post -polio syndrome as a result. And C, Auckland Hospital, and then bring it all up so I can bring, so you can clearly see it. So I can get it up here, right? And so that I can get the camera in the right place where it says and you can, I'll scan it properly and get the thing into view properly it says Auckland Hospital's ongoing willful failure or, result, or refusal to provide her, her records which she needs in order to confirm she was diagnosed with polio and to obtain a diagnosis of post polio syndrome she believes that armed with such diagnosis she will be entitled to compensation and various forms of help she believes also that this allegation without the amount of wrongful discrimination under um, uh, she also believes that this uh, uh, alleged withholding amounts to wrongful discrimination under the Bill of Rights Act 1990 and the Human Rights Act 1993. I've put little notes on this because I'm going to actually copy this off to them because this was before I finally got permission to go to the Archive of New Zealand to clearly show that yes my medical records are hidden under a 70-year confidentiality agreement and yes they are still doing this to me and they are now breaking the Crimes Act section 258 which is the dishonest use of documentation and etc and of course she went on again to say that oh well, until I write it correctly I don't get my case heard which is why I'm getting more and more annoyed because they keep doing this shit to me and you can see all the excuses of how it's not written right even though I've submitted all the things how they asked me to extend it and I extended it and they said there's too much written in there blah 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 excuse upon excuse saying it's not written right it's not written right it's not written right and this is all the excuses from that now that was the end one in November 2004. Why I'm mentioning that is because that was after everything else had been heard. This is another one of the conference notes that was there, but again, some of the stuff is not where it's supposed to be. And why I'm showing you all this is again because we come to one of the first conference stuff pieces. And if I can find the right one I'm looking for, um, it actually clearly has where... Mr. McCarthy actually went to speak to social development because it was after he gave his um, comments of that um, when's it supposed to cover my costs. Here we go. Um, let's see, is this the one we're looking for? No. This is the other sections of it to do where he said I haven't got it written right and what about my concerns and they were going to track things down and about the wheelchair and etc. Where's the one I'm looking for? Because he actually whined about how he, it was a property of the Ministry of Social Development was supposed to deal with it, which is why he stood up in court and said about it. Which is why, here we go. It's in the part of the judge's notes and initial conference here. It says initial, initial conference uh, minutes with Master Sergeant dated November 23rd near the people who were involved. And Mr McCarthy had complained about how, and it says here, it seems from what Mr. McCarthy tells me that this is a social securities matter within responsibility of the Ministries of Social Development and within the Justice of the Social Securities Appeal. Um, attorney, uh, appeal attorney, Ms. Janae, has agreed to allow Mr. McCarthy to contact the Ministry of Social Development's legal section to see whether he can arrange 
for officers to investigate her concerns. This may um, assist Ms. Ms. Shinai's concern. However, it does not deal with the deficient pleading, and I am I will come back to this shortly. Now, again, this was back when we were standing there, and he stood up and he, he said about all this, and then he turned around and said, after he'd done all this, in between this date, which is the date of this one, was the... 27th of November 2003, between then and the 8th of October, which is this one, the 8th of October 2004, Mr. McCarthy had stood up and said that it's actually wins in the Ministry of Health who are supposed to take responsibility for the health condition and are supposed to cover my costs, because I am not covered by ACC, he confirmed all that, and then later I had the letter done by Helen Clark, which again was written as Prime Minister of New Zealand to confirm that yes, the Ministry had done this to me and that they were taking responsibility under the act of the sections of who was supposed to be responsible for what which is Ministry of Social Development and the Ministry of Health and because as you can see we are now in the year 2014 where they broke every fucking word that they did to me and I wrote out what was what and where was where of what they have done to me over the time period and I named them all and there is the, the case file number I filed this as I said in the High Court you can see the little date down the bottom down there. Those are all the defendants and the acts that they've broken, the agreements that they broke, everything. I even wrote it out in short form once I got it down to where it, I had to name everybody because I was told to name everybody that was involved. And then I wrote out my statement of claim, explaining again, which clearly writes in, in large little letters over here, you know, that um, the Ministry of Social Development has reached the verbal agreement given by the Crown Lawyers and the High Court of Auckland to the... Um, court master, as well as the written confirmation given um, later given by Prime Minister Helen Clark that quotes that wins in the Ministry of Health uh, to cover the costs for um, the health condition given to me by the Ministry of Health as I am not covered by ACC. Now, they turned around and they said, after I explained out about what's been going on with the Ministry of Social Development, whether they've been purging my file, ignoring the request, which is what's this is about ignoring the request when we put about 92 times. These are some of the letters and stuff that have been purged from the files. And as I said, they've all been there. All the phone bills I've listed, along with all the stuff it's cost me. All the things I've had to pay out for, again, because they've not paid up the way they're supposed to. They've not kept their word to me. They've breached every agreement. Everything I've had to lose because I've had to put up for loans. Who I've had to deal with, what I've had to deal with, and all the things to do with it. And the judge turns around and says that, where is it? Oh, nice little quote. Um... The document is entirely deficient. It fails to comply with a number of rules uh, that will be returned to Mr. Genet for simple procedure to do it. They, they bitched because I hadn't put the little numbers here in the right places. I hadn't put how many defendants on it. And then they told me to put everybody on it. Now they turn around and say in this paragraph that I put too many on it's mixing so I'm not allowed to put them all on there anymore. I've got to take it off. So they say that it's not, they're not happy with that aspect of it. All right. Then they complained about um, here, allegedly about breaking the Crimes Act. The crimes that we clearly know that they are because they purged all those fucking letters to start with. So it's not an allegation, it's fact because the Ombudsman's Office found this out. And again, did anybody listen? Did anybody pay attention to what I've written? No, they all ignored me. All right. And then they're on about purposes of the verbal agreement. Well, you've just seen copies of the references of where it refers to it when the notes were left in there. When that doesn't count the ones that's the actual minutes that are missing. But it clearly states in there how they're supposed to look into everything and sort it all out, which they promised me they did, and they did. And that's what the letters were. And then they turn around trying to tell me that I'm lying through my teeth. And then again, all the excuses they make of why I can't have it done, because I haven't got it written correctly. Now tell me that's justice in this country. Tell me that's being fair to me that I have been poisoned, lied to, ripped off, fucked over, stomped on and treated like shit for years on end. To have them make excuse upon excuse by people who are supposed to be there to protect us, help us, and do stuff. So far, this judge has done nothing but fuck me in circles. He did it recently, and he did it again several years ago, because I've got proof of that too, because that's over here. Look, see? You can see 2004. That's what the SPCA stuff. And this is, again, the excuse is you haven't got it written right, and they're a charity, and they're allowed to get away with it. So don't tell me New Zealand's a wonderful place to live. Here's proof it's not.